Hello today, how are you? This is Joanne Hewitts. I hope that I'll have some people who are watching today. Uh, love for you to make a comment uh, so I'll know that you're out there. Um, I, I hope more people watch than make comments, but I hope that uh, maybe you'll decide that you want to connect with me at some time and just leave a little comment uh, saying um, that you're there and that you uh, like seeing what I have to show. Hi, Tina. How are you today? Oh, it's storming there. It's just starting to get dark here today, a little bit darker, like a storm could come, but Lately, everything misses us, so we're, we would like to see the rain come. Hi, Faith. How are you? I'm so glad that you're here uh, catching me today. Uh, this is a warm, humid day in North Carolina. Uh, in fact, uh, my husband has been helping at uh, one of the local high schools with tennis practice. Uh, he's been a lifelong tennis coach, and uh, he, uh, they called the practice off today because the heat index was too high for the, the girls to, to practice. So that tells you what kind of day we're having here in North Carolina. It's been sunny, hot, humid, and the thunderstorms are, are threatening to move in our afternoon thunderstorms. That's what summer is like here. So um, today... Um, I wanted to talk to you about a couple things uh, before I get started with our project. And um, one of them, this is not the card that we're going to make today, but I wanted to talk about this card for just a moment. Um, I made this card for the tutorial medley group. This is a group of demonstrators that have gotten together to help each other out. There's about, oh, maybe 25 of us, 24, 23. And these are, are well-known demonstrators. People like, uh, you may follow some of them, like Debbie Henderson, uh, Connie Babbert, Diane Lethbridge, Sarah Levin, Josie Smuck, France Martin, uh, Anne-Marie Heil, Libby Fins. There's just a lot of really good demonstrators who have gotten together. And every month we sign up for a stamp set and we do a uh, tutorial. We make up a card to go with it and we do a tutorial and we add them all together so that we can all use those tutorials. So uh, this is the one I have for August. My uh, stamp set was all squared away. And so I've used that stamp set in the bundle. I've also used a fun little uh, embossing technique on vellum that I actually copied from Sarah Douglas, our CEO. So I'm telling you all of this because at the end of my blog post, you will see that I have put that I am going to send you these t tutorials uh, in a month that you purchase $50 from me, and I'd like for you to use the host code that's on my blog post. Um, but uh, if you would like to receive uh, 20 tutorials, maybe a little more than 20 tutorials each month, uh, if you spend $50 from me, and I'm also sending it to my team members. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, cards that would be like this. There's a variety of stamp sets. We can only, uh, three of us can only sign up for a stamp set. So there's lots of different stamp sets represented. And some really, really good demonstrators, talented demonstrators. So if you would like to receive the uh, tutorials from me, it just takes a $50 purchase. And during August and September, you would also get the um, a celebration item for that. So who could ask for anything more? So just a, a little bit of explanation about what the tutorials are that I am uh, telling you that... Uh, I will send, and I'll send those by email toward the end of the month. Um, and this is this one I'm going to have on my blog next Tuesday, so the tutorial will be there 
for this one. And I'm really proud of this. Uh, I mean, if you like black and white, I, I do. So I love my card. The next thing I want to talk to you about is a Christmas card class. And I'm having this class locally on August. Okay, I mean to look that up. I think it's 20th and 21st. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. So we are making these four cards and we're making three each of the four cards. The cost of the class is $20. Um, and um, I'm going to offer this by mail as well as uh, in person. So you would just need to, you could comment here if you're interested in the class, or you can send me an email and let me know that you would like the class. $30, and then if I have to mail it to you, there would be shipping involved. And I do plan, I haven't done it yet, but I plan on making a video uh, to show how to put these together. So you would have a little bit of help there with that. So uh, just let me know if you're interested. Some new things, a little bit of old on this one, uh, but I think they're really cute cards. So it'd be 12 cards, $30, and postage if I need to mail that to you. So there you go. Those are a few little announcements. And today we are going to be using, let me get my catalogs out. We're going to be using the Penguin uh, so the Penguin Place stamp set, and then there's a die, uh, punch that goes with it or on page 33 of the mini catalog. And then in the celebration catalog, uh, they have coordinated a pack of paper that will, will go with the stamp set and actually the punch. So let me show you that paper. If you haven't gotten it, you're going to want it. I'm sure. So um, it is a 12 by 12 uh, pack, uh, six different designs. Well, 12 designs if you count the front and the back of that. And uh, there are 12 sheets of paper. So um, I'm going to go through and show you just how cute these characters are. Now, I didn't use any of these on the card because I had pulled this piece out for the... Um, Christmas card class, and I didn't want to use it and then start looking and think, oh my, I used that paper. So, but these are great little figures here. This one I used uh, quite a bit. So you can see it's all the penguins, the polar bear, the snowman, the fox, all in beautiful little winter scenes, some larger, some smaller. Um, and it's just really really pretty and then the back of these let me kind of spread them out a little bit so that you can maybe see the back when i flip it over okay the backs of these i've got one short piece in there let me find it uh are more generic I um, mean, they're a little Christmassy, and I'm sure these are snowflakes, but they could just be a, a party paper. Uh, so some really cute, uh, very usable designs in this paper. So I've already gotten several packs, and uh, I'm just excited to have it. It's just so cute, and uh, I can see that my grandchildren are going to love it. So here is the card that we're going to make today. Uh, here is the stamp set and the punch. So um, this is the Penguin Place stamp set, the Penguin Builder punch. And then we're going to be using, this is a uh, paper that I showed you is called the Penguin Playmates paper. The paper is free for you if you do a $50 purchase. Uh, so during celebration, which is August and September, you can earn free items with a purchase. Okay, now this card doesn't look like much. I can tell you that you've probably seen lots of uh, samples that look just like this on Pinterest. But the neat part of this card comes when you open it up. And it just has a little scene like this. Um, um, I know you can't see that 
side of it, but I want you to see that it opens up a little bit. And uh, so this is the inside of the card. Now, I was watching a video the other day by another uh, fellow North Carolina person. Her name is uh, Sharon Verity, and Sharon was making a card with this uh, pattern, with this fold in it. And uh, as she was making that card, I could just envision this, this card. So let's get busy with the making of the card. So the first thing is we're going to have a fresh freesia. That's one of our new ink colors this time. Uh, fresh freesia cut at five and a half by eight and a half. And I have scored this at four and a fourth. I'm still going to match my corners when I fold it in. And then I'll burnish this with my bone folder. And then... Uh, on the outside, we're going to have this uh, piece that is cut at four by five and a fourth. Four by five and a fourth. And that, I'm sorry, I'm going to take just a minute to look up something in my book so I can show it to you in just a second. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this down. And you don't need a lot of glue. You, you, if you do, it's just going to push out on the sides. And uh, that's not a good thing. So I do hold mine corner to corner. And with the glue, I can kind of move it around until I feel like it's straight. So there's that. And then I have a label for the front. And I did not bring those dies in, but I will show you where to find them. Uh, this is the painted Christmas suite, and uh, they have the Christmas season stamp set, and the dies are the seasonal labels dies. So these stamps cut out the images that are here on the stamp set, but then you have all these neat little labels. And I have really been using this a lot. So this larger label is the one that I have used um, for the center of this card. And I'm just going to glue it on. Uh, this has a lot of bulk to the inside. So I don't want to, to make it too dimensional because that's going to make it a little more expensive to mail. A little more bulky to mail. So... I'm going to keep that in mind, but we are going to put something on dimensionals out here. All right, so there's our uh, label. And then I have already cut out. The thing about this is you do have to fussy cut your, your uh, images from the paper, except for one. And I'll show you that in just a couple minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and glue down this little penguin. He is just so cute. My son-in-law is a big lover of penguins, and therefore the girls will be. Sagan already is, and I know Hazel will love uh, penguins. So uh, I, that's one of the reasons why I felt like I had to get this, uh, just for them, because uh, they, I don't know, they've kind of assigned uh, animals to our, our grandchildren, my daughter and her husband, uh, he's the penguin, and so Sagan is actually uh, a polar bear, and uh, Hazel is a fox. So you can see how this paper is just perfect for them. Let me add another one there so it'll stay fat out there in the middle. And let me remove the backings of my dimensionals. So I did add dimensionals to the back of the polar bear. And I'm going to ha add him on up here a little bit like that. And, uh, and then I'm going to add a saying. Now I am using uh, Fresh Freesia uh, ink for my um, card today. And I tried just stamping that on the, on the layer itself, but it just didn't show up well enough. So I ended up stamping it 
on uh, just a piece of paper and trimming around it. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to stamp. And this says happy birthday. Now the, the font in the stamp set is small. So uh, I am going to trim around this. Okay, so it is a little bit crooked, but I'm going to trim around it, so I think we'll be okay. Get my scissors. Okay, so on this one, that happy birthday is back there. I've hidden it. Uh, it's back there, but that's what you can do if you want to just try something and see what it will look, knowing that you can camouflage later uh, and fix it. One of the things uh, that we learn is how to fix some of our mistakes. So, I had a uh, new class that I was teaching yesterday. I'm going to uh, a place for 50 and older and we're doing some stamping and uh, I had to keep telling them that people that got their cards that they made will never have seen my card and they're not going to know what it looked like and they're going to be happy with what they did. With their cards that they made, they're not going to see the mistakes uh, because they're not going to see that original. So that's how easy it was to do the front of the card today. So let's work on the inside of this. And I can see as much as I tried to make sure I brought everything in here, I do not have my trimmer. Please excuse me for one second. I apologize, but it seems to happen every week as much as you try. But I did think that you probably would want to see me cut the insert. So the insert is four and three fourths by eight and a half. And Tina, I know that you watched uh, Sharon's video and I have changed the measurements a little bit. Hers went from the edges here, and I wanted mine to go from the corners, all the way from the corners. So I changed it a little bit, so you'll see a little discrepancy there. And I'm going to take a measure, and I'm going to measure up two inches from the right side. And I'm just going to put a little dot right there because I want to remember to go for that area. And so in the stamp set, I'm going to, um, well, I guess I, no, I'm going to stamp it first. I'm going to use this long piece right here to mark that. Um, now you could, if you're doing a different kind of fold with this, you can just take your trimmer and trim, okay, there's my, uh, from the corner, the top corner, down and put your pencil mark in your little trough there, and you can just cut it. But I wanted mine to look a little hillier for my, uh, my snow scene. So we're going to stamp, let me bring back in my fresh freesia. And stamp that up. With a bigger stamp, it's easier, I think, to stamp it this way. And I can see I've got a little bit in the corners. So I'm just going to get that off. Better safe than sorry, huh? And I'm going to kind of stamp from here, 
but I'm going to eyeball that I'm going down this way. So it's really uh, kind of a just eyeballing it kind of thing. And you can see it doesn't go all the way over to there. So I'm going to ink it again. And just continue um, with it. Kind of like this. I've got my little dot over here I'm looking at. And I'm just going to do that. And that goes almost to the dot. Might would have been better if I'd actually connected those lines, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. So instead of cutting, I'm just going to take my scissors. Instead of cutting with the, with the trimmer, I'm going to take my scissors and just trim along this line. And I see I've got some other people that have come on. So hello, Debbie. Good to have you here. Okay. So there we go. So this is what's going to go inside the card. And it will go from corner to corner by the time we're, we're done, okay? So before I do any more, I'm going to put uh, two pieces of designer paper. So this card does take a lot of designer paper. I think it's worth it. So we're gonna put these on. Now, if you were using some sort of designer paper that had a seam to it that just kept going across, then you might want to watch how you put your paper on and match your seam so that it would uh, continue across. Uh, I don't have that with this paper, so that's not something I have to worry about. I'll put that down. I guess it might could have matched over there, but I don't think with this paper it will make much of a difference. Okay, and then we'll put this one over here. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Thank goodness glue can come up if you do it pretty quickly. There we go. So there's the inside part of the card. And I'm going to... Um, move that aside and we're going to score this paper and I just realized that I did not bring in my piece of paper that had my score uh, score pieces on there but we will score this okay we will end up with eight and a half half of that would be uh, four and a fourth. So we would do two and one eighth, four and a fourth, and six and three eighths. So let's hope that I did my math correctly. And I'm going to score from this side. And we'll score first at two and an eighth. So two and two little tick marks. Two and an eighth. We're doing the score. And then I'm going to do it at four and a fourth. And then the last one is at six and three eighths. And this one might be a little bit harder for me to get correctly. So I'm just going to turn it around this way and do it at two and an eighth. And that should work. So I'm just going to make sure that looks pretty straight. And that should get it divided into the four equal parts. Okay. 
So we are going to take this part and fold it in. And we're going to take this part and fold it in. So the two end pieces come in. And then this middle part folds like a mountain. So that's going to make it a zigzag like that. Okay? All right. Let's bring our card back in. And so it's going to end up being like that. And uh, let's build our scene. Now, I've already cut out the pieces that we're going to need. I didn't think you needed to watch me cut. So I'm going to kind of spread those out a little bit to help me find what I'm looking for. So yes, this card's going to take some time because you've got all of the cutting to do. But let me tell you about these two. These two were not cut out by hand. They were cut out with the punch. So let's find the paper that has those. Let me pull. I'm going to pull in my scraps that I had from doing all this cutting. And I, I did keep them because you can find little uh, more things that you can use. And the paper that I used is this one right here. And it has the penguins here. Okay. So let me show you that when you use the punch, you might have to finagle around in there a little bit. Hey, Sue. Hey, I'm glad you've been watching from the, from the start. And you're going to have to come in from this way to do it or cut in. And if I do this, you can see it's going to mess up some other things close to it. So I don't really want to, to do that. I don't want to, to mess up uh, what's around. So what I've kind of done with some of these others is kind of cut around. Let me find my scissors that I was using. Uh -huh. Okay. And I will do this one. So I'm just going to kind of cut around some of this stuff and then I can come in from the top here and cut him out. So I'm going to make sure I'm in the screen. So here, here he goes. And that, that one was easy to, to get out. Okay. So I'm also going to show you something else. I'm going to cut another one of these out. I'm going to cut this one right here. And you may wonder why I want part of one. Why would I do that? But if I can think of a way to use my parts, that makes my paper worth a little bit more, doesn't it? And get more out of it. So I'm going to cut him out and I'll show you what I'm going to do with him in just a moment. On my original card, I had cut this one out to go up here. And what I did was something just like this. The image was uh, just part of an image. And I cut it out and put it under there because I knew the bottom would be covered up. So I think we'll do the same here. I'm going to take this one and just glue it up in here. Even though it's not the exact same one I used before, that's not going to matter. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to lay this here just so I can kind of see maybe where he would be need to be. So I'm going to put him, I'm going to lean him over a little bit so you can kind of see his arm a little bit sticking out of there. So there's that first one that I'm going to put down. And let me move some of these aside. 
I am going to try to do some of this the, the same. So I'm going to bring this bear. He's over here. Um, and it's supposed to look kind of like he's walking on the snow back here. So I'm going to put him about like this. And let's just glue him down. Now remember, you don't really need a whole lot of glue. It's just a small little piece of paper. So I'm going to put him there. Okay. And then I have a fox that looks a little bit like he's running here on the on the snow. So I'm going to put him about like that, I think. So let me add a little bit of glue to him. And I'm just going to leave that laying there to help me know exactly where I want to glue that. Okay, so there he is. And then I have one other penguin, one of these that I've punched out, that's just kind of up in the air here. Um, I think I'm going to switch out and put this one, since I didn't put him over here, I think I'm going to put him over this way. Um, and just kind of put him down in there. If he doesn't quite touch my paper, maybe he'll just look like he's hopping. Maybe he'll be one of those rock hopper penguins. And I'm going to put him over here. Okay. So there's the background part of my card that I made. And now we're going to work on decorating uh, this panel right here. So I'm going to move that other out of the way. I'm going to leave this here so I can see what I had done before. So I wanted to put this polar bear over here and uh, he's too big for the panels and I wasn't really sure if he would fold that well. If I glued that there I was afraid it would maybe bunch it up there. So what I ended up doing was just bending this. I'm going to use my bone folder. And I'm going to glue him down, but I'm just going to add the foot with a glue dot. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. So I'm going to glue him that way. And let me find my glue dots here. I'm just going to put um, a glue dot right here under his foot. And I think that'll keep it, but it'll give it some give as well. And then I'm going to just add one of the little trees. And then I think I have another one of these penguins that I had over there. So we'll add him here. All right. Now I wanted to do a saying. The saying in the stamp set says, hold on, uh, to the coolest friend ever. But I didn't want it all in one row, so I'm going to attempt to um, stamp this in two different stampings. And for the first one, I'm going to try to ink it up just right here with 2V. So I'm going to stamp that here. I think it's crooked, but I think it'll be all right. I mean, this is kind of whimsical anyway, and I just cleaned my stamp. And I'm going to do to the rest of that coolest friend ever. And we'll add that. Maybe I'll stand up and do this one. Okay. And... 
I did get a little bit of the, okay, I don't have my sand eraser with me today. I'm not running in the other room again. So I will tell you that what you might want to do is just use some of your trees strategically. And I think you could put a tree right in there, even though that's going to be a fold. I think we could put the glue mostly on one side. Oops. We'll see how that will work. I'm just going to fold. Oops. Let me let it dry a couple of minutes. Okay. And then, and that, in fact, that's why I have these trees here to help hide some of my marks. So I'm going to add this tree. Up in here. And then, let's see, let's add another tree. And I don't know if I could put that right in there or not. Might be asking for trouble. We'll see. Okay. So I'm going to bend this one. And I think it's not going to stick so much there, but when it's up on the card, it will be okay. And then we'll bend this one back. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to add one of these penguins here. We'll add the little fox. And then I think I had another tree. Starting to hear a little thunder in the background out there. And then we're going to add this pink one. And we're going to put him down in here. Now, I put him down a little lower because without thinking, I put some glue on that hat. And I didn't want it to, well, it actually isn't going to matter because it is going to be glued down. But anyway, that's why I did it. Be it as it is. Hey, Susan, how are you? Glad that you joined me. So let's add this piece to the card, and then I think we'll be about done. I'm gonna to have to get my eraser and go right there on that spot, and I don't have it in here, but I will clean it up. And what I'm going to do is add some glue to the back of this tallest first panel, and I'm gonna match it in the corner down here and just glue that down like that okay and then what I'm going to do is fold and I'm not sure about putting a I'm going to fold this down and then I'm going to put glue here on this part and I'm going to close the card I did end up getting it sticking out a little. And then when you open it up, you've got your pieces together. So there it is. I don't think you can see it so much from the corner, but I think it really is a cute, cute card. And uh, it's so cute, and I just really like it so much that I'm going to mail one of, this, one of these to one of you. 
I'd rather mail it to someone in the United States if I could, but uh, I'll give you about 24 hours to make a comment. Oh, I got hearts. I can't believe that. I'll give you about uh, 24 hours to make a um, a comment, and then we'll pick someone from there to, to get this card for free. I may have to ask you for your address. Uh, and uh, there you go. I think it turned out really cute. I'm still a little disturbed with this tree right here, but anyway, it will work out. So probably if you could get along without putting it in the folds, you'd be a little bit better off. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate all of you. I enjoy sharing. And uh, please remember that uh, with any order of 20, of 20, of $50, you are going to get near the end of the month a uh, email, it'd be actually a couple of emails uh, that will end up having uh, over 20 tutorials from the tutorial medley group. So um, uh, if you purchase, this is what I'm offering you each and uh, for right now every month, uh, the tutorials for that month. And then the other thing is that I am doing the Christmas card class. I'm doing it locally. Uh, but I'm also offering it by mail. So this is going to be three each of four cards uh, for a total of 12 cards with envelopes for $30. And if I have to mail it to you, of course, there's going to be some shipping. So either comment or let me know. Uh, if you are interested in this class, I'm going to try to have it ready to mail by the 23rd. And the local classes are the Saturday and Sunday before. I think that's the 20th and 21st, but I could be mistaken about that. Now, I have right now I have five people signed up for each of those days. And I'm thinking with the COVID numbers going up that I'm going to limit that to six. Uh, so we can, can spread out uh, and have plenty of room uh, and not be on top of each other. So that would leave one spot for each of those days. So thanks so much. Again, here are our cards that we did. We just did the one, but it took a while. Uh, so thank you so much. Hope you'll toin turn in or tune in is the word uh, every Wednesday at four. Appreciate it, and thank you. Bye-bye.